Welcome everybody. Week two, Montana heads to Utah Tech on Friday for a Saturday evening kickoff. Um, Montana beat Butler at home to start the season, 35-20. We've got Coach Hawk with us. We've got Junior Bergen score a touchdown in the first quarter. And we've got Nash Fouch with us today uh, for the defense. Uh, as usual, please raise your hands and we'll pass the mic around for questions. Um, but Coach, we'll start with you. Uh, your final thoughts on after watching a bit of film from uh, the Butler win and, and as the Grizzlies head down to Utah Tech. Thanks, Eric. Uh, we're excited to be 1-0. I thought our guys played hard in that game and we had a lot of new guys uh, <clears throat> in their first Grizz football game and I thought they performed well and did a good job. So as always, there's a lot to correct and we will begin on that here in a few minutes. Um, in terms of uh, Utah Tech, um, I don't think any of us for the most part with the exception of one have been to a game there so it'll be something new a uh, new road trip be our first road trip of the season um, they're they're uh, not totally familiar to us so the preparation will have to be uh, pretty intense this week we won't have anything really historically to go upon uh, <clears throat> we know they're going to challenge in man coverage. Um, they're going to open up formations on offense, and and they uh, throw it around. They've got a lot of run and shoot principles in their offense, so we got to be ready for that. We know they led the the WAC last year in passing yards, so we we uh, have our our work cut out for us. Questions. Bobby, you said there's a lot to clean up. What did you identify as the main things to clean up after the opener? Um, just execution things for the most part, Frank. You just got to play better. And then in your experience as a coach, where can a team make its biggest stride from week one to week two? Well, I think just that, frankly, you can execute better, more cleanly. You can operate better. Um, you can handle formation adjustments better on defense. Um, you know, we let some guys loose in man coverage, some things like that. Offensively, um, we can probably do a little better job seeing coverage and making plays on the ball. Uh, those are probably the main things. Coach, offense looked really different with Sam in there, with Clifton in there. Just from a coaching perspective, how difficult is that to install for two guys during the fall coming into the season and have it ready to go for week one? It's pretty simple. we got three weeks. Um, it's really not all that different. It's just a matter how you call it. Coach, you mentioned just uh, the familiarity or kind of lack thereof of Utah Tech with them being kind of new to the FCS level. When you look at programs making the jump to the FCS level, have you noticed like programs do something that helps them get kind of start to be more competitive? Because Utah Tech still feels like kind of in a growing phase with their program. Have you noticed that or yeah, that I haven't really paid much attention. The Nash, obviously the the big hit. Everybody was talking about it after the game. Just from your perspective <laughs> on that play, why were you able to make that play? And it seemed like you kind of fired you guys up on defense. Um, we've been working tackling every day since the beginning of camp. Uh, every day in the spring. And I, I think it's just hard work paying off. I mean, Ryder Meyer had 12 tackles on Saturday. I think it's just I think it's just our hard work showing on the field, and we work it every day, whether we're in full pads or just helmets. You know, taking good angles, closing space, and running through people. So that's what we're going to try to do. You've obviously had some big hits in the past, but was that the biggest hit you think you've ever been a part of? I think so. Yeah. Just this defense and the performance this past week. What, can you just speak to what you guys were able to do and some new faces out there, but some vets too, just kind of meshing. Just what, what was the biggest thing that stood out to you? I think probably the biggest thing for us uh, that shows for us on Saturday is that we have a lot of guys who can play football. Uh, we got a lot of guys who can go out there and take meaningful snaps and, and get the job done. So I think that's something that we can take with us for the rest of the season and just you know keep guys fresh and just play fast all the time. Bobby, after watching the film uh, with both Sam and Clifton, what were some of the things you liked that uh, stood out to you after looking back and watching the performances? What were some things that stood out? Yeah, what were some of the things you liked from <clears throat> each of them? Uh, you know, I thought they both did a good job of uh, of uh, seeing what they were supposed to see in terms of what the uh, 
the opponent was giving us. Uh, you know, we didn't have any administrative issues. They operated the offense really well. You know, they, they got the checks we needed. Uh, we, were, we didn't have any delay games or anything like that. We didn't have a bunch of formation issues. Uh, so, you know, you term, I don't know why people, you know, I listen to some things around the country. People um, think that game manager is a bad term. It's part of the quarterback position. You have to manage the game, and they both did that really well. And on the flip side, coming into this week, another two quarterback system with Utah Tech, uh, both right-handed guys. What did you? You kind sure? Of, I, I looked. We're positive. Both right-handed guys <laughs> can confirm. So, uh, <laughs> what have you? What, what have you seen for both of those guys? The kicker's on? left-footed. Well, that'll change the game plan. <laughs> anyway, what'd you say? Um, well, yeah, they are both right-handed. Uh, and uh, what do you? What have you seen from them on film? What stands out about the way they run their two QB system? Uh, they're pretty similar. They don't change much with the two of them. Um, it's similar. And lastly, on defense, a couple of new guys, Hayden Harris and Riley Wilson, making starts. Uh, what did you see from their performance, and how do you think they adjusted to their first game here? I thought they did a good job. Um, you know, we we want to get better and better every week. So, you know, they're just like everybody else on the defense. They're not playing their best yet, but they played very well on Saturday. Um, Riley did a, a really nice job um, rushing the passer when he had a chance to do that. I thought Hayden did a good job getting off the blocks and being in the right place. So um, they're both still learning it, but but uh, I thought they did a good job. Uh, Nash again, going back to that hit. You know, uh, it went pretty viral on Twitter, online. You know, the DM's been blowing up. You know, what's that whole situation been like? Yeah, it's it's been a little bit crazy, and I you know I really appreciate all the all the love I've gotten about it and everything. But um, to be honest, I'm mostly excited that the fact that the Grizz are one and zero, and we have the opportunity to be two and zero this week. So. For you, Junior, obviously you got a chance to work with Coach Pease as your position coach the last few years. So now that he's running the show uh, as the offensive coordinator, have you noticed anything different or are you pretty similar? Like what are some of the things that stood out with the offense so far? Um, I just think how, how explosive we can be. I think he's kind of trying to unlock that. Uh, we got a lot of guys who can make big plays down the field and even in like short yardage uh, catch and run stuff. I think we got a, a lot of guys who can do that and then he also likes to run the ball, so and we got some, some good backs and a good old line. You guys kind of have a knack sometimes of games. That first drive is just you know quick score ability. So what was what, why was this past week able you guys able to do that with that huge touchdown? Um, since Coach Pease has been the OC, he's been preaching on starting fast, and you know that's how we need to get going. Uh, we want to start fast on each drive, start the game, we want to start fast, and um, you know we were just able to do it there, and uh, it, it worked. Yeah. And just from your perspective, working with the two quarterbacks, one runs a lot, one throws it a lot. What's it kind of like working with that system from a receiver standpoint? Uh, it's great. You know, those guys are both uh, highly competitive, and you know they want to go out and do whatever they can to win. So, coach, you talked about Eli Gilman a little bit in the post game. Obviously, he had a great game, but I just wanted to to know a little bit more about his background. He's from Minnesota. It's not an area that you guys recruit a lot. Um, how did you guys get him get him here, and what have you liked about his development? these last two years since you've gotten him here? Yeah, he he's a highly recruited guy. Um, he had a lot of scholarship offers. I mean, they're mostly FCS and MAC schools. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he came out here for camp. Uh, I think he really enjoyed it. Probably a question for him what the trigger was. But um, he liked his time here. He enjoyed it. Uh, so I mean, he committed to us early and then hung on um, yeah he's a good player obviously he's uh, he's a good zone runner uh, sometimes that shows who's the more most instinctive backs are the ones that are good zone runners so uh, I think I think he's got good vision good instincts and he's a pretty physical guy for a young guy and I think the best is yet to come with him probably Probably the offensive line, it wasn't mentioned after the game, but did not give up a sack. I think the only thing that was counted as a sack was the uh, intentional grounding. 
Um, but what did you like about the offensive line's pass protection? Well, I thought they played pretty well. Um, you know, run and pass. You know, we can we can talk for hours after the game about the old line if you'd like. That'd be great. We don't have to talk about anything else. I thought you wanted to hear about trick plays. <laughs> okay. I thought they played well. Um, they'll continue to go. Uh, played played pl quite a few guys. I think we, I don't know if we played eight or nine. It was the number, I think, nine. And uh, no, nah, it was nine. I thought those guys did a nice job. And then also just in the run block, and it seemed like you guys had a lot more rush yards in the second half. What did you notice from the, the run blocking from the line as the game progressed? I think that's fairly typical uh, with teams that will be persistent with their run game. I think early in the game, teams uh, have the ability to stop the run a little better, as, especially when it's hot out like that. I think you can have a chance to wear people down a bit. Um, I think maybe that happened to a degree. I didn't really evaluate it that way, but I, I would, that would be my best guess is that's how it went. A lot of times, if you'll be persistent with it, those carries that are two, three, and four yards in the first half can be five, eight, and ten in the second half. Defensively with Utah Tech, Coach, did you, you know anything they do specifically, like what kind of stands out about what they do? And do you guys use anything from that 2021 game as, as you prep? Because you mentioned some of the unknowns. Um. Not really. They're a little bit different. They've got a new special teams coordinator. Uh, the offense has changed. Uh, so, no, not really. Haven't mm -hmm. looked at it yet. Probably I might go late in the week. I might go back and take a look. Nash, just same thing. Just you guys are, have seen this program before, but there could be a lot of changes. So, how do you guys, from like the players' perspective, kind of prepare, knowing it's not going to be the same team you saw two years ago? I think you just take it like any other game. You know, watch as much film as you can. Learn, learn their tendencies as best you can. I mean, uh, they got speed in the slots. They're gonna, they're gonna throw it around the field. So I think you just approach it like any other game. Just make sure you, you uh, focus in on the little things, and I think we'll handle them just fine if we prepare like we do for every other game. A couple more. Uh, for both Bobby and Junior, I was just kind of curious with the new clock rules, uh, the clock not stopping on first down anymore. Did you guys notice anything either going back and film or in game with the game moving any differently pace wise with the new rule? <laughs> no, I didn't notice any Good. difference. You should. It Good. Felt like a game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if Junior noticed that, he wouldn't be focusing on what he needs to do, which is what's the next play. But uh, yeah, I think the games are, are losing plays. And I'm, you know, I'm watching other games around the country. I don't know if you saw the eight-second clip of what Chip Kelly had to say. Anybody see that? Yeah. Go look at it. Is that should be viral. Is that a sentiment you kind of share, just his thoughts? I do. I've shared that already, so I'm beating a dead horse if I keep bringing it up. Anyone else? Thanks, guys. Good to see you. Oh. Sorry, Coach. Uh, Junior, just as a, as a matter of course, I mean, there's going to be a lot of turnover on the special teams unit from year to year. Um, what do you think about the way that those units performed yesterday? You're one of the carryovers on, on a bunch of those units. Um, I think they performed well. Uh, obviously, there's still room for improvement. And I think, uh, you know, we left some yards out there on the field. But, uh, you know, we'll, <laughs> we'll take it and look at it in the, on the film and uh, get better from that. Now we're done. Thanks, everybody. We're going to go watch it right now. Huh? <laughs>